I'm a voice teacher. I teach people how to find their voice. <laughs> Even when we're singing, so much of the singing is, I want you to be impressed by the quality of my voice, so I'm going to hear it. What, how does it sound? And what I ask is, well, how does it feel? And most people go, well, what do you mean? Like, how does singing feel? Because you can really only control what's inside of you as opposed to how it's affected other people. So you, I, you, you switch the perception of that and go, I want to control how other people see me or receive me. And what's interesting is that um, I've learned through my experience that that's, um, that only gets you so far. So I learned as a kid that who and what I was, about four, wasn't okay. Um, like, I remember I had the Cinderella dress, and um, I wore a Cinderella dress every day after school. And um, my parents really never said anything about it, but there, I remember these hushed tones, like, what are we gonna do about Jeff and that dress? And so what happens is, you learn how to be wildly perceptive of how other people respond to you. Like, what works, what doesn't work. I could control other people's response, as long as I did what they wanted, which ultimately was lying. <laughs> I laugh about it because at this point it's so funny because so much of my life was trying to figure out how to be okay and figure out how to get other people to validate that I was okay by um, figuring out what it was that they wanted and trying to figure out how to give it to them. Being gay in the Mormon faith is hopelessness. It's hopeless. And, and the hardest thing about it is that all the leaders say is if you just tried harder, if you just were more faithful, if you just believed in God more. So as long as I change, then God can love me. And how good I am at changing is how much love God can give me. And Mormons in general have difficulty with believing they can earn God's love. And if I just work harder, I can win God's favor in these ways. And so I was no different. Tribe and tribal connection is fundamental for life. As we, as, as we all know, connection to tribe, belonging. And from my earliest remembrances, I did not belong in that tribe. And it is without a doubt um, to me, a horrific abuse. Yeah. It's, it's telling children they're not okay. Yeah. The path for me out of that was a very, very, very intense drug addiction that led to my life being completely out of control. My whole life has been about figuring out what this is. And once my relationship to understanding that I could create a God that could handle me and love me, I began to figure out a way for me to love myself and handle myself. And um, for people that are in hopelessness, I totally get it. Um, and I get why they can't handle it and I get why they turn to substances and escapisms and it makes a lot of sense. Um, waiting five minutes because um, it does get better. Yeah. It actually does. And um, I didn't believe it when people said that to me. I wanted to, and then I got to a point where I was desperate enough to kind of be available to receive, and that was kind of the best blessing of all. Mm -hmm. So um, my job is to just share my truth instead of what I think you want my truth to be. And then risk, risk what that might mean. Mm -hmm. Risk whether you'll reject me or risk whether, and then I'm just becoming more available with managing that and feeling safe 
with my own connection to myself and God within me, it makes more of a space for me to be able to risk and regardless of what that exchange produces, I'm okay with being me.